Yo, 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 what is up? It's Chris Sims Unbuttoned, and I got a baller supreme here today with me. Look at this guy right here. Neck is bulging out of the TV screen and everything. Jermaine, the man, Johnson the third from Florida State. What's up, dude? How are you? It's going good, man. It's going good. Uh, I'm enjoying the process. I'm taking it all in, and, you know, now that it's kind of in that weird little period where it's just – you know, waiting for draft time to come up. I've been enjoying some time with my family. Good, good. Yeah, now you're kind of just sit back and you got no power. You just got to kind of let it fall where it falls, right? It's got to feel kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like in football, you can always train really hard and do what you got to do to, to to get the results you want. Now in this period, it's all been set. So you're kind of just waiting to see what goes on. So. Yeah, it's a little weird, but it's awesome. Yeah, it is. It is awesome. And you put in the work. You're going to be just fine. So I don't think you got too much to worry about. And then, and then this is really the last piece of the process. Once you've talked to Chris Sims, you know, okay, now my work's done and I'm ready for the NFL. So that's where we'll start. Hard-hitting questions. Megan the Stallion or Cardi B? Which one? <laughs> uh I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, come on. You got to think on your toes. I got you. I I'll, uh, let's go Megan. Me going Megan. All right. He's going, she's going, he's going with the stallion, Travis Scott or future. Which one are you jamming? If you got a choice. Future. Future. Okay. Uh, easy. what's that? What'd you say? Like, come on. That's easy. That, that's easy. That's, that's a no brainer there. You're definitely going future. <laughs> of course. Um, Xbox or PlayStation? You know, I got an Xbox. All right, good. So. You're one of the few. I mean, do you have any friends you can play with on Xbox? Every college kid <laughs> I talk to plays PlayStation. I don't know what the hell happened with the Xbox and the college kids. Uh, Xbox is, is the way to go. I've been playing it since I was little. I actually had a PlayStation 2, but and then Xbox is the console you want to have. What's the game you playing on there right now? I mean, what, what, what are you usually getting on to do? <laughs> I mean, it, I'm usually Call of Duty, you know, Fortnite kind of guy but you know Elden Ring that video game just came out and you know it's kind of the talk of the town so I've been I've been on that pretty hard and it's a challenge but it's fun okay all right that's cool that's good I mean you get on there you like put on like the headpiece and everything and talk to people as you're playing and all that look I got the headpiece I got some water some snacks a towel for when my hands get sweaty I got oh it all oh my gosh so you're a gamer off. you're you're a real gamer okay <laughs> I, I know I yeah okay okay all right so you like talking crap too while you're doing it I mean you're probably shooting my son who's 11 are you talking crap when you're doing it like eat that you 11 year old Hey, I mean, if, if you could dish it out, you better be able to take it. That's all I'll say. I mean, you're my kind of guy. I like it. Definitely. All right. Let's get into some of this. You know, first off, you, Georgia, explain. I don't know if everybody out there, my listeners, they know you're coming out of Florida State, but we're at Georgia first. Kind of explain how you went there out of high school and kind of your story about how you ended up in Athens. All right. So, I mean, my story is pretty wild. You know, I'd say I've been bouncing around like a, like a ping pong ball, but um, I, I came out of high school. I went to Independence Community College for 18 months. Um, it's actually on Last Chance U, season three and four. Um, I was there both seasons, both uh, both years for that. And then after that, I, I actually ended up being able to essentially choose where I wanted to go to college because, you know, I, I did pretty well for myself there. So I ended up choosing Georgia. And I played at Georgia for two awesome years. I learned so much about myself off the field and on the field. I always give Georgia the flowers. I wouldn't be who I am today uh, if it weren't for everyone in that organization, in that program, from the coaches to the players. Right. So I'm always a dog at heart as well. And then, um, you know, came a transfer decision. So, you know, it's one of those calls where just a really saturated room. And, you know, I had to ask myself what I wanted to get done uh, with my last year. So yeah. I kind of made that tough call uh, transferring to Florida State. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. Yeah, cool. All right. I want to get into some of that a little bit. All right. First off, like when, you know, you're, you're leaving the junior college, you got the pick of the litter. Where was it narrowed down to? I understand Georgia being on the final list, Kirby Smart, defensive guy, all of that. What else was kind of on the on the radar as a finalist? Uh. So coming out of junior college, correct? Yes, right. Um, I mean, it was it's kind of all over. I know I was looking at Texas, um, Texas A and M, Oregon, uh, Oklahoma, uh, and I think the I think that was it. And UCLA because you know, the, like I always liked that school. Yeah, up. yeah, okay. 
What what about what is it about Georgia that that like you know I didn't take a visit there. I was a high recruit. I went to Texas. I don't know how much you know about me, but I um I never got went to a visit down there. But everybody loves it. Like what what is it about that campus, the school, the is the uniforms? What is it that gets so many of you damn good players down there? Uh let's just say <clears throat> you want to be a, you know, a football player for the University yeah. of Georgia if you're living in Athens. Right. Right. Um I mean, they treat you awesome. Everybody treats you awesome there. Um, you know, it's kind of their pride and joy uh, in that town and in the state really being a Georgia Bulldog. So, um, you know, all the love and all, all, this, all the thanks and cele celebrating you get as a player, um, it just is, you know, it's just, it's an awesome feeling. And yeah. I think when you go there, you feel that, you know, and I felt that and not to mention the family feel with the coaches and my teammates. So, I mean, it was just all there for me when I made that decision and, you know, I, I would make it again. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I, that's why I picked Texas. I, I mean, this is what's weird about your scenario, to me at least a little. And please correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, your Georgia experiment didn't go bad. It was good. I mean, you played well there. You, know, you didn't have to transfer. It's like it seems like, is it fair to say? I mean, you, you seem like you still like love the program. You're not bitter at them in any way, it doesn't seem, way, seem like. No, I mean, I'm a very good standing with uh, not only the players, but the coaches as well. I talk to Coach Lanning, you know, often every every other day. And, um, you know, I've communicated with Coach Smart and just it's it's a very it's a very positive relationship I have with Georgia. It's just one of those things where, you know, I did have to make that decision. Yeah. Um, like you said I played OK or I played decent, you know, but by no means was, was I able to really show the world who I was as a player. Well, all right, so then now let's get into that a little bit because what they do schematically you know, it doesn't seem like it really fits you, I mean, at least to me. I mean, again, I, you're, a, you're a beast. You're a top 10 pick in Chris Sims' world, so you can do anything. But was the way they played as far as just scheme-wise part of the reason why you end up going to Florida State? Uh, not really. I actually enjoyed the defense. It was very intricate. It showed me, it, it taught me so much about the game because I'm coming in from junior college and high school being a traditional 4-3 defensive end. Right. And boom, I'm at Georgia and I have to communicate with safeties and I have to take three through and I got to pass things off. So I'm learning all types of crazy things about defenses. Right. Um, so no, it was, it wasn't bad for me and, and it wasn't out of my, out of my toolbox. But I guess for me, I ended up falling into the Sam position on the defense. Um, and, and I didn't like, uh, you know, kind of what was, you know, what was the narrative about how I how I was as a player, because the Sam backer kind of stacks off. Right. He coverage, you know, he's kind of more softer of a player. And I think that's, you know, that's what the perception was of me as a player. So I kind of wanted to, you know, use that last year to, you know, set the record straight and into what kind of player I am. So when you're there and you can do it all, like we talked about, I mean, you're phenomenal at playing the run. I would think Georgia taught you that your ability to stick hands out and read and disengage people. I mean, I got to think that's one of the Kirby smart things, right? That he taught you there. Cause you're great at that aspect of the game. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, coach smart walks around with the microphone and, um, you know, if your hands aren't even in the right spot, we're reloading the rep. Like, so, <laughs> I mean, the technique and everything is on point. Uh, like you said, because of Georgia and, and because of the training that we got there and the, and the competition I got to go up against every single day. Yeah, it, now, when you're there, did you realize how special the rest of the team was around you? I mean, did you, did you, you really did like, you knew like, Whoa, Wyatt and Jordan Davis and Walker and all these guys are just studs. Like you were all aware of how good you guys were. No, a hundred percent. We all knew. Um, I mean, you could, you could be out at practice and look around and be like, this is a legitimate like NFL roster. Um, like these, these guys are, are the real deal. Um, and obviously couple years go by and that is the case <laughs> like all these guys that are leaving the draft eligible first second round um I mean you got a bunch of dudes on the team and not to mention the younger guys who just haven't gotten on the field yet but right. we see it every single day in practice those guys are the same thing and keeps turning them out you know like Georgia does so um I mean that thing's flooded with talent with immense talent and, and I think we all knew that you did know that all right so out of those three I mean again this is no disrespect they're all awesome 
Who who was the guy that when you were there where you were just like, he's the freakiest? Is it Jordan Davis? I mean, he's the one that I want to say just because of the size of the man and how he moves, but who was it to you? It would have to be Jordan Davis. Um, that is that is the biggest human I've I've seen move <laughs> like that, like football movements. Like you'll see a big dude and he probably can't jog off jog jog right. after ice cream truck. Like right. you know, but Jordan, he's doing football movements, spin moves, all type of crazy things. And he's as big as a fridge. Like, that's an issue for the other team. So, I mean, just seeing that kind of stuff in practice all day, every day, um, just kind of amazes you that someone that big can move the way he does. How's your – you're still in contact with them now? Like, you guys text, talk? I mean, how how often do you kind of kind of stay in communication with them at this point? Uh, I mean, like I said, we're brothers. Yeah. Um, we, we communicate pretty much every day. Uh, everybody – uh, on the Georgia team, everybody that's been a part of it, um, and uh, you know, people that are still there now. So um, we're locked in. My brothers know that that was a decision that you know that kind of had to be made on my end, and they never make me feel not a part of the family anymore. They always ask how I'm doing. They would visit me at Florida State and, and check in on me after every game. So I mean, we're locked in. Uh, you know, I'm thankful for those brothers. Yeah, that's that's really cool that you got that. I think it speaks to the guys there, and it speaks to you definitely. And I mean, you guys must be laughing hysterically on text going just like holy shit we're about to be some rich bastards here we're gonna have so much fun this is gonna be great <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we're just especially you know going on these visits and whatnot you know we're all like where are you headed you know what are you guys doing and and, and we might actually end up at the same visit sometimes so it's fun to see see everybody man it's, uh, it's amazing it's amazing all right so now get us put us into your mind it's time to make the decision to leave georgia you know, you, you've come to that point where I, I need a new spot. Give me kind of the thoughts, the process, how it went down and why you chose Florida State ultimately. Right. Um, so once I decided that, you know, a scheme change just in order to change the narrative on, and my play style and how I am as a player, you know, it came down to kind of, you know, why not just go to a 4-3 to just show that I, I can do that. I've done it for two years at Georgia. You know, now this is me getting dirty and getting my hand and putting my face in someone else's face mask. Like this is my this is my play style. Um, so, you know, I, I ended up making that transition and finding teams or, or just talking to teams and narrowing it down to those teams who, who fit that, you know, for me. And then ultimately, Coach Norvell from Florida State gave me a call. And, um, you know, the more the more I listened, the more that he spoke, you know, the more sense that it made. Um they needed me and I needed them and it just worked perfectly. It was a perfect fit for the, for us both. And, you know, what kind of did it for me was, you know, he didn't only want me there for what I could do on the field. You know, he called around uh, him and coach Landing have a great relationship and, and coach Landon uh, obviously told him some, some good things about me. So he wanted me to come in there and he wanted me to, you know, not only change things on the field, but just change things culture wise and in the locker room, and the best part of how he said it was he said, I don't want you to do it other than just being yourself. Mm -hmm. So someone that has that much faith in who I am as a man doesn't want me to do anything but be myself and come in. Uh, you know, that says that says a lot. And I had no problem, you know, dropping everything and coming to play for a guy like that. Yeah, that's good. And you look good in their uniform. You got to wear your number 11 still. You went from like one cool uniform to the other. So it fit. It definitely did. All right. So I want to get into your game a little bit now. I mean, I'm, I'm right. so impressed with your game. You got a great first step. I think you're one of the most natural pass rushers in the draft. Even better natural pass rusher than the guy that you know everybody looks at the top two with Walker and Aiden Hutchinson. You know, you know what, give me your scouting report. What's the best thing about Jermaine Johnson's game, in your opinion? Uh, everything I can do to you as a, as an offensive tackle. You know, I, I'll scare you because not only can I go through you, I can go around you, and I can go inside of you. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, I think that that's a terrifying thing to go up against. If I was a tackle, I'd want a speed rusher or a straight power rusher. So now I know at least what to expect. But with me, you have no idea what to expect. Like you said, um, not only is my pass rusher game lethal, I also am pretty, pretty good in the run. You're, uh, you're amazing in the run. Like, absolutely. I can't, I couldn't, it was the shocker to me. I thought you were going to be only a guy that's wide nine coming off the edge. And then when the, the run game came along, that, that to me was when I was like, Holy shit, this kid's real. Uh, you, you take great pride in stopping the run, don't you? Yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, I, that that does come from Georgia. Uh, 
that, that you know we, we've been through bloody Tuesdays is what we called them <laughs> um, and uh, we took pride in, in, in stopping the run and you know pads would 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 be popping you know that week in practice and so we like to just say earn the right to rush the passer so that's kind of how I play I, I, I'm amazed you know you're Ben you can win with your speed the speed to power I'm also I'm amazed about your ability to win with quicks you know your side to side movement and stuff uh, wait, wait, how do you kind of know when it's time to kind of hit somebody finally with that inside move do you feel it do you do you notice the body going up field too much like kind of kind of take us through your eyes and mindset when you hit them with that move right it's one of two things uh you know how I pass rush I, I rush the fight line uh which is three or four yards behind the tackle um <clears throat> if I beat him to the spot and I'm even you know I'm working an edge move if he covers me up I'm either going through him or, in, or I'm doing an inside move um or I'm picking on him. I know he's scared. I know he doesn't know what's coming. Now I can bring some stuff, you know, that I've been practicing in, in, in that week of practice. So um, just comes in, you know, doing doing your main thing as your pass rusher. And then, you know, once you feel the pressures on him and, he, you know, he's a little scared, you know, you could put, you know, you put the heat on him. Was uh, Icky the best guy you went up against in college, you know, in your time? I know you went against some other good ones too, you know, but the way you played against him was good. But, yeah, what, what, what was your thought? In my entire career? Yeah, yeah. Give me now, some. That's, that goes to uh, Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas. That was your that was your toughest in practice, bloody Tuesdays, having to deal with him? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, because especially me, a kid coming out of junior college, just raw, athletic. Right. And then now I'm going up against him. He's been coached at, at, at uh, Georgia for a couple of years. And, you know, I have no technique. And, you know, let's just say I got humbled quick. And, and um, you know, I had to learn, like, okay, boom. I'm athletic. I'm gifted. Cool. Let's get the technique down. Let's do all that because it is not going to fly at this level going off pure athleticism. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You got to have more to it. Talk, talk about Icky, you know, just that, that matchup, what it was like. I know you didn't line up over him all game long, you know, uh, but still you had some moments, you held your own in the run game, you know, but talk about just what jumped out about him as a player, since he's going to be a guy that's probably going to be drafted around the same time you are. Yeah. I mean, he's an awesome player and, you know, if you want an alignment that that's, you know, with a mindset that that's kind of who you want. Um, but I mean, I watched film and I saw a couple of things I could take advantage of. And I think I did that in the game, uh, you know, but that just comes with film study, being a student of the game, you know, and understanding what you can take, what weaknesses you can take from someone's game to, to help your team win. Who's, who's your favorite player in the NFL? You know, who's who are growing up now? Who's the guy you kind of look at to, to model your game after? I mean, mindset purpose, Aaron Donald, uh, no brainer, you know, he, the guy does what he wants, <laughs> but he backs it up. Yeah. And then uh, just freakishness, just as a pass rusher, Miles Garrett and, and Khalil Mack, I guess uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so those guys that, that just, you know, people are scared to go up against and, and that do change games and, and you know, that, that, a team goes okay. We'd rather have him on our team than than on the other team. Yeah, no you know question. So. I wrote I wrote Khalil Mack down. That was one of the names I wrote down. Your body's similar. Uh, you have a same a very similar style of play. He was great against the run. Uh, I, I I can see that for sure. I mean that, that that makes a lot of sense. You know, Aaron Donald's the man, no doubt about it. All right, so like you know, who's the quarterback you're ready for? Who's the one you're looking like? I cannot wait to blindside that dude and feel and and just have that feeling. Who is it? Look, I will tell you, I got, I think this was like first time I got my heart broken was when Tom Brady retired. Cause I was like, <laughs> I'm never going to get the chance to get him. <laughs> and so I was like, dang, man, like a year too short. Um, but then he came back. So I'm hoping that I, I'll get a chance to get him. You know, I don't know about blindside, but it, it, it is what it is. You know, I'll help him back up and, you know, I'll definitely ask for that jersey after the game. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. so, All right. You know, respect your elders. Yeah. That's right. You're going to respect your elders. I, it sounds like you're going to take something off. You know, you're not even going to hit him full speed, which I'm disappointed in. I want full speed hitting of Tom Brady, but you know, it sounds hey. like you're too enamored. You're starstruck. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. you know, that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> okay. I apologize after the fact, but it's the, it's the nature of the game. You know, your your body itself, I love asking guys like, especially like you, because you're a specimen. But, you know, when I'm looking you up last night and just thinking of some other things I might want to ask you, and I watch your, you know, I watched some clips from you in Georgia when I was breaking you down a few weeks ago, the transformation of your body. 
You know, what's gone into that? Not that you've got this huge transformation. I'm just saying, have you had to really put, you know, effort into getting bigger and thicker? Or is it something kind of just naturally happened with age and getting older? Yeah, um, I think it's part of age and getting older. The men in my family tend to, you know, really get, you know, I guess to their thicker. final form. Or yeah, right. <laughs> right. Older. Um, so I think it was just a little bit of age. But um, really that COVID little break from around March to June, that's, that, was kind of, that was my biggest jump I've ever had athletically, uh, physically. You know, I put on 20 pounds. I became as explosive as I've ever been. Um, just was a whole different player going in, going back to Georgia uh, in, in that summer. So, so yeah. So what, what was it? COVID you just did it. You just, you just trained crazy work started like heavy lifting during that time. Cause you couldn't practice as much and do all that stuff. So that, that led you down that path. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, you know, after my exit meeting with coach smart coach landing, and, you know, I just had some, some good insight on what I needed to get better at and work on. And, you know, it's just like COVID was like, you know, as horrific of a time that was, I guess for me, it was a great time for me to focus and, and, and be in the gym six days a week and be on the turf all those days as well. Um, so it was just a great time for me to sit down, focus, recenter, use that time uh, in, a, in a great, productive way. And I think I did that. Yeah, you, you definitely did. It looks like it on your body. I mean, 20 pounds, geez. And then it all looks like it went to your legs, your ass, and your arms, just the pain, you know. I mean, bulging out of everywhere now, man. Freaking nature. So just give me the last question. How big are the men in your family? Like, what, what are we talking about here? Uh, I mean, my dad, he gets pretty big this way. He's not as tall as me. My uncle, he's tall and he's also big this way. My grandpa was big this way. So, yeah, right. Um, I mean, I just got a little height and, and I'm sure I'm not done growing. Yeah, no, I don't think you are either. I appreciate you coming on with me, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan of you, the person. Uh, I really am. I can tell you're mature. You got your crap together and love watching you play, dude. I really do. So good luck with everything. Well, thank you. It's an honor. All right, buddy. Be good. Good luck. Peace out, man. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.